aplastic anemia is a pancytopenia, meaning all blood cell lines are decreased. So the term aplastic anemia, which just refers to low red blood cell count, is actually a misnomer. So with aplastic anemia, there's actually anemia as well as leukocytopenia, or low white blood cells, as well as thrombocytopenia, or low platelet levels. This condition takes many forms, ranging from mild to severe, depending on the cause. Now, red blood cells are produced in the bones of the body, mainly in the bones of the pelvis, ribs, and sternum, through a process called hematopoiesis. This process starts in the bone marrow, the innermost portion of the bone, where the hematopoietic stem cells reside. These serve as progenitor cells for all the different cell types found in the blood. First, hematopoietic stem cells, also called hemocytoblasts, can become lymphoid progenitors or myeloid progenitors. The lymphoid progenitors can develop into lymphoblasts, which can then differentiate into some white blood cells like T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and natural killer cells. The myeloid progenitors can differentiate into erythrocytes or red blood cells, megakaryocytes, which eventually give rise to platelets, or myeloblasts, which can then become other white blood cells like monocytes, neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. The most common cause of aplastic anemia is autoimmune destruction of the hematopoietic stem cells. The details of this mechanism are not fully understood, but research shows that there are alterations in the immunologic appearance of the hematopoietic stem cells because of genetic disorders or after exposure to environmental agents like radiation or toxins. This means that the hematopoietic stem cells start expressing non-self antigens and the immune system subsequently targets them for destruction. As the immune system destroys hematopoietic stem cells, a whole host of complications arise. Due to the low red blood cell count, tissues cannot properly oxygenate, so the heart pumps harder to circulate the red blood cells, leading to chest pain and shortness of breath. Low platelet count leads to an increased risk of bleeding from the most minor injuries and in mucosal areas. And low white blood cell counts lead to the body's inability to fight off common infections that can lead to sepsis. Now, there are many causes of aplastic anemia, but the disease is most often idiopathic or without an identifiable cause. Definable causes of aplastic anemia include radiation and toxins like insecticides or industrial agents that contain benzene. Drugs that may cause aplastic anemia include chemotherapeutic agents, anti-seizure medications, anti-inflammatory medications like endomethacin, anti-thyroid medications like propylthiouracil and methimazole, and antibiotics like chloramphenicol and sulfonamides, infectious agents like the Epstein-Barr virus or HIV, and clonal or genetic disorders can also cause aplastic anemia. Finally, the most common genetic disorder associated with aplastic anemia is Fanconi's anemia. Fanconi's anemia is the most common inherited cause of aplastic anemia, which is a condition characterized by pancytopenia, predisposition to malignancy, and physical abnormalities like short stature, microcephaly, or a small head, developmental delay, cafe au lait skin lesions, and absent or hypoplastic thumbs. Symptoms of aplastic anemia include fatigue, pallor on account of low red blood cell levels, mucosal bleeding or petechiae due to low platelet counts, and recurrent infections due to low white blood cell counts. Aplastic anemia may be suspected based on a complete blood cell count, which shows low red blood cell counts, leukocytopenia, and thrombocytopenia. Erythropoietin, or EPO levels, are also increased. EPO is a hormone released by the kidney that tells hematopoietic stem cells to grow and divide into new red blood cells. With aplastic anemia, there aren't enough hematopoietic stem cells to generate appropriate amounts of red blood cells, so more and more EPO gets produced in an attempt to compensate. There may also be decreased reticulocyte count. Reticulocytes are young red blood cells, so this demonstrates decreased red blood cell production. Bleeding time may also be increased, Due to low platelet counts. Definitive diagnosis requires a bone marrow biopsy, which demonstrates profoundly low counts of hematopoietic stem cells with the normal cellular morphology in the absence of any infiltrative disorder like malignancy or fibrosis. 
This is also referred to as an empty marrow or dry tap. Treatment of aplastic anemia is largely dependent on the age of the person affected, as well as the clinical history. If the condition is thought to be due to a medication or toxin, these substances or exposures should be removed from the affected person immediately. For people under the age of 50, first-line therapy is a stem cell transplant. For those greater than age 50, first-line therapy is immunosuppressive therapy with medications like cyclosporin or glucocorticoids, as well as medications that help to stimulate increased hematopoiesis, like granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Blood transfusions may be necessary for severe cases. All right, as a quick recap, aplastic anemia is actually a form of pancytopenia that results from autoimmune destruction of the hematopoietic stem cells. Low red blood cell numbers cause poor tissue oxygenation. Low white blood cells cause an increased susceptibility to infections, while low platelets leads to an increased risk of bleeding from the most minor injuries and in mucosal areas. Most often, aplastic anemia is caused by medications, toxins, viruses, and genetic disorders. Treatment involves either stem cell transplant or immunosuppressive therapy.